In this video, I want to talk to you about portable power supplies, also sometimes known as solar generators, portable solar generators. Now, I teach a course on how to design and build your own off-grid energy system. I have another course on how to build your own solar generator uh, because I think there are a lot of advantages there for some people, uh, but other people have no interest in building their own or maybe they couldn't even do it if they wanted to. The whole area of portable solar generators and portable power supplies has is, is really exploded in the last few years. Uh, they're, they're quite attractive. Every time I turn around, there's another brand that's appearing on the marketplace. So this video is a, a tour of the Generarc Home Power One. That's this unit here. Uh, I, I want to show you how it works. Uh, I'm impressed with it, and, and I'll explain why I'm impressed with it. I think it's a, it's, it's a decent unit for someone that wants to just buy something ready to go. Uh, how do they work? Well, they all work in the same sort of way. Uh, they have a battery inside, and the, the electricity from the battery passes through something called an inverter, and that gives a 110, 120 volt output power. Um, most of them also have access to direct current power. So that's the power that comes from the battery without any modification from the inverter. So we've got outputs here for just, you know, your, your power accessory for whatever you want to plug in here. Phone charging, stuff like that. I'm going to show you more about that. I'm going to show you how it works in a minute. But essentially that's what this is. This is a, this is a power supply and most of them can be charged with solar panels. The, the Generarc unit that I'm showing you here can be powered that way too. Um, so how does it work? Do I recommend it? Well, first of all, let me say, I haven't had this unit long enough to uh, offer you any comments on reliability. Um, reliability takes two or three years of use in order to really get a handle on. But what I, what I do see impresses me and uh, let's just take a look here at the controls just so you can get, uh, get familiar with it. So right now it's sitting here, it's not doing anything. Um, this is how you turn it on. Now there's a little fan in there that will kick in when the internals heat up uh, during use. But right now, what do we have going on here? Well, the battery is 90% charged. The input is zero watts. <clears throat> so we're doing nothing to charge this right now. And the output is two watts. Now two watts is not very much. Well, it jumped up to five there. Why is there any output at all when we're not actually using any power from the unit? Well, that's because that thing I told you about, the inverter, the thing that converts battery electricity to the kind of electricity that would normally come out of your wall outlet, that actually takes a little bit of power just sitting there, even doing nothing. So you can see the... Uh, two watts of output there that's just the inverter idling so to speak and then there's an on off switch now it shows zero in a little while 30 seconds or a minute or so that's going to go out and then it'll be off and we won't be using any juice from the battery now over here i want to point out something this is the input so this is where we would charge the unit and we can charge it in in one of a couple of ways um, there's, there's a power supply here that plugs into a regular outlet. So you don't necessarily need solar power in order to charge. And uh, you can just plug in. This is one option. And I'll give it a minute or so. And yeah, there you go. You can see it's bouncing around 100 and something watts. So that's the rate at which the unit is getting charged and the output is, is still that sort of inverter idling type power. Uh, it doesn't take very long for this number to go up to 100. There is another way of charging. Here, let's unplug it and you'll see oh, we lost our input there. Um, this adapter here comes with the, the solar panels uh, that we can plug in. It can actually take two solar panels one in each one of these ports. And uh, the solar panels, which I will show you in a minute, are uh, quite innovative. They're, they're, they're especially made to be portable, which is impressive because this unit is supposed to be portable. 
But there's one thing I, I have to warn you about, and I'm going to put this through its paces in a second, but the, uh, the style of advertising for these units is generally, a, a, as, a, as a, a generic category, the implication is um, gilding the lily a little bit. It's not unusual for advertising copy to say, you know, power your home, power your life with something like this. Well, you're not going to power your home and you're not going to power your life with something like this because the output is just simply too small. And when I say the output is too small, I mean that in two ways. I mean the peak amount of power that this can put out uh, continuously in this particular unit is a thousand watts. Now that's plenty for things like um, lighting, <clears throat> Uh, charging phones, charging computers, things like that. A thousand watts is fine. This actually can handle a periodic spike of up to 2,000 watts, which is kind of nice because many things that are run by electricity have a spike in power as they first take off. So that's what this is designed to, to handle. The thing is though, I mean, for instance, you want to boil some water in a regular electric kettle, a thousand watts isn't going to do it for you. Um, you're going to need at least 1500. So you need to temper your expectations. This is essentially for lighting and charging. That's really all you can expect from it. Um, so let me just show you. We've got it on. It's charging here. Uh, let me just grab a trouble light, for instance. Now this is a regular incandescent bulb, 100 watts. So it uses a lot of power. It's not an LED light. It's, it's nothing like that. But, uh, but there you go. So, now what does it show here on the uh, output? It's now up to 100 watts. Actually, that 100 watt light bulb is drawing a little bit less than 100 watts because the inverter takes some too, as you'll recall. But uh, I have done tests and this unit here will keep a 100 watt incandescent light bulb going for about nine or ten hours and then it gets down to the point where it needs to be recharged again. Uh, we can really increase that if we used uh, an LED bulb or one of the more energy efficient halogen bulbs. Um, so there's a case to be made for that but I'm just giving you a sense of how it works and what you can expect from it. Now over on this side we've got uh, USB-C and then regular USB for charging. As I said, this is where a unit like this really shines. And then you can plug your phone into the end. If you've got a power adapter, maybe for who knows what, a uh, tire inflator, another power inverter perhaps, that can plug in there. Um, Well-made unit physically. It has a great feel to it. Uh, the handle flips up. It's easy to carry. It's uh, not particularly heavy, although these solar generators and portable power supplies are always kind of on the heavy side because of the batteries. That's really the limiting factor in products like this is the batteries. They're fairly heavy and well batteries just don't store that much energy yet. We got a lot of work to do when it comes to improving battery technology. Um, but a unit like this has it has the best kind of batteries that we've got right now uh, and that's why it's so small. One of the main aims with this video is to give you a sense of reality what can something like this do for you? What can't it do for you? Uh, I, I don't want you to be disappointed. Um, now, if you're the kind of person that has no interest or aptitude in building your own portable power supply like this, um, then you need to put this in perspective. This, this purchased unit and many of the other purchased units, you need to put that into perspective. The amount of power that it can provide in terms of quantity. So before I talk to you about peak power output, so um, 1,000 watts peak power continuous, 2,000 watts surge. Uh, but that doesn't tell you how long, how much power. That only tells you the, the flow rate of power, not, not the total quantity. So this unit here stores a little bit more than one kilowatt hour of power. So the best way to think about electrical parameters like watts and kilowatts and kilowatt hours goes back to water. I, I like to use this analogy. Uh, this can sustain 1000 watts of output continuously. That's the same as a kilowatt. 1000 watts is a kilowatt. And that's like 
the flow rate of water coming out of, say, a garden hose. There's a certain number of gallons per minute that flow out of there. If I went and got a fire hose, I'd get more gallons per minute flow rate. If I got a water pistol, I'd get way less gallons per minute of flow rate. So that corresponds to wattage or kilowatts in the world of electricity. But the, the water pistol, the garden hose, and the fire hose have nothing whatsoever to do with how much water we're talking about here. So how much of a container it would fill. The electrical equivalent of that is kilowatt hours. So one kilowatt being sustained for one hour is one kilowatt hour. And that's just about the storage capacity of this unit, one kilowatt hour. Now here at our house, when I look at my electricity bill, uh, we generally consume anywhere from 1,000 to 1,500 kilowatt hours per month. So we're looking at, you know, sometimes as much as 50 kilowatt hours per day. This is one kilowatt hour. So you can see that this is, you're not going to cook a turkey with this. <laughs> you're, you're not going to light up all the lights in your house. You're not going to, you're not going to run your well water pump for instance, or at least not for very long. Um, and I'm not faulting with this, you know, they're all like this. E even the ones that I make on my own in my course, the limiting factor is the batteries. And because they're portable, the batteries can't be really too big. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to carry it around. So I just mentioned this in order for you to have a realistic understanding of what you're getting into. Remember, lighting and charging. And if you have a travel kettle, I mean, you really need coffee in the morning and you have a travel kettle. They're smaller. They take less electricity. You can run one of those with something like this. Not a regular kettle, though. Now, perhaps the biggest difference between a unit like this and one that you make yourself is the components that go into it. Now, the components are, generically speaking, they're all the same. We have a battery. We have an inverter, which takes the battery voltage and turns it into outlet voltage. And then we also have something called a charge controller. This is something that allows more or less energy into the battery during the charging phase. So they all have that. The difference is in a, in a, in a unit like this that comes ready to go, all of those components are proprietary, which means um, you can't go out and sort of buy a replacement inverter or uh, oh, I need more of a charge controller. I need a bigger charge controller. So I'm going to swap that out. You, you can't do that with these manufactured units. Not a problem, uh, you know, for a lot of people, but I just thought you might like to take a look inside. Uh, and then we're going to look at, at uh, one of the ones, the units that I make. So let's just uh, pull this off here. I've already taken the screws off. I'll show you the other side in a second. But... So batteries individual cells. These are cooling fans because inside it's going to get warm with use. Um, let's just see what happens when we turn this on here. Okay, it's turned on. It's just sitting there right now. Let's see what happens when we plug in the light. See if we can get those, those fans to work. Now they're only going to work when needed. There'll be an internal temperature sensor here and they're going to kick on as needed to cool things off. Uh, we're not really using much of the power of this unit. As I said, this is a 100 watt bulb. This unit can produce a thousand watts of continuous output. So we're really not taxing the unit at all with this light. But uh, let's take a look at the other side and see, what, see what's in there. So more batteries. You can be sure that a lot, a lot of what goes on in here is, is batteries. Another fan. But you can see, um, if something were to go wrong here, or you were to decide that you wanted more capacity, you couldn't really do anything about that. Now, this has um, a very good warranty, which is a great sign. I mean, as I said, I can't comment on the reliability, but, but uh, the, the warranty is, um, it's a, it's a five-year warranty. That's a long time. So that's going to work, um, going to help you out with reliability issues. Now, uh, what about cost? 
You know, these things aren't cheap. Uh, they go on special, but you're going to spend anywhere from, uh, you know, eight, nine hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, sometimes more, depending on the size of the unit. Now, if you were to go and build your own, you're going to spend probably 80% of that. It, it's not cheap to, to build a good portable solar generator, uh, but you do have some flexibility too about the components you put in, how you can adjust them, how you can ch change them if you need to. So let me get the portable solar generator that I built, and I'll show you what that looks like. And you can see the different components, and I'll point that out to you. So this is the unit that I designed and built and created the build-it-yourself course around. And I only show it to you now so that you have something to compare the Generarc unit with. Um, so what we have here is a bunch of non-proprietary components. So uh, this is a battery. It's a 75 amp hour battery. Uh, it's actually for a small forklift. Um, lead acid battery. Lead acid gives the best bang for the buck. So the most capacity for the, the purchase price at the moment, although lithium is coming on strong. Uh, here we have the charge controller. This regulates the charge going into the battery. And then this is the inverter, which actually the whole the whole shebang lifts out um, so you can get at it you can change it you can work on it whatever you like um, these cables here connect with the solar panel that has cables coming out of the back it's a hundred watt panel so um, it, it can charge itself you can also charge it from a wall outlet as well if you, if you want so same components but different packaging essentially now one nice thing about the Generarc unit is the solar panels it comes with. And that's what you see down here. Um, they really are designed to be portable. That, that's not terribly portable. That's a fairly standard panel with a fairly standard support structure. But, uh, but look at this. It's like a little, little briefcase almost. And... Uh, and then this, this opens up like this. And then on the back, look at this, on the back, there are things that stick out that allow it to, to sit at a pretty decent angle in order to catch the, uh, the most sunlight. So quite impressed with that on the back here. We've got a little pouch. It, it holds the various cables and things for charging. And you can, also, you can also tap power right off of the panel itself for direct charging without a battery or anything else. Kind of a nice thing, really. And then we have the different cables. This cable, um, this cable is for connecting... In this case, as I said before, two panels to the unit. And uh, then there's also the charging from the wall block, which I told you about before. So, so bottom line, does it make sense? Does it make sense for you to get one of these? Well, maybe, maybe. Uh, first of all, are you concerned about being able to charge your phone and have some basic lighting? And, and maybe the tiniest amount of cooking. If that's a concern for you, and I think that it should be a concern for anybody because we're all very dependent on electricity, and you're not going to run your dryer, you're not going to run your range, you're not going to do anything like that without a, a proper full off-grid energy system for your home. But for basic charging and lighting, uh, something like this makes a lot of sense. And um, I haven't seen a unit that is a better designed and more impressive than what the Generarc people are up to. So um, I can recommend it if you want to get something off the shelf.